Georges Jean Raymond Pompidou, French, PPIDU, the 5th of July 1911 to the 2nd of April 1974, was Prime Minister of France from 1962 to 1968, the longest tenure in the position's history, and later President of the French Republic from 1969 until his death in 1974. He had long been a top aide to President Charles de Gaulle. As president, he was a moderate conservative who repaired France's relationship with the United States and maintained positive relations with the newly independent former colonies in Africa. He strengthened his political party, the Union of Democrats for the Republic, Union des Démocraties pour la Vie République, or UDR, to make it a bastion of the Gaullist movement. Pompidou's presidency is generally held in high esteem by French political commentators. Biography Pompidou was born in the commune of Montboudif, in the department of Cantal in central France. After his cane at Lycée Louis Le Grand, where he befriended future Senegalese poet and statesman Léopold Setter Senghor, he attended the École Normale Supérieure, from which he graduated with a degree of aggregation in literature. He first taught literature at the Lycée Henri IV in Paris until hired in 1953 by Guy de Rothschild to work at Rothschild. In 1956, he was appointed the bank's general manager, a position he held until 1962. Later, he was hired by Charles de Gaulle to manage the Anne de Gaulle Foundation for Down Syndrome de Gaulle's daughter Anne had Down Syndrome. Prime Minister. Jacques Chirac served as an aide to Prime Minister Pompidou and recalled, The man gave the appearance of being secretive, wily, a little cunning, which he was, to a degree. However, it was primarily his intelligence, culture, and competence that conferred indisputable authority on him and commanded respect. I remember his untamed eyebrows, his penetrating, very kindly gaze, his perceptive smile, full of humor and mischievousness, his voice with its wonderful low, warm, gravelly tone, and a figure that was both powerful and elegant. Naturally reserved, little given to emotional outbursts, Pompidou did not forge very close ties with his colleagues. He served as Prime Minister of France under de Gaulle after Michel de Bray resigned, from 14 April 1962 to 10 July 1968, and to this day as the longest-serving French Prime Minister under the Fifth Republic. His nomination was controversial because he was not a member of the National Assembly. In October 1962, he was defeated in a vote of no confidence, but de Gaulle dissolved the National Assembly. The Gaullists won the legislative election and Pompidou was reappointed as Prime Minister. In 1964, he was faced with a miners' strike. He led the 1967 legislative campaign of the Union of Democrats for the Fifth Republic to a narrow victory. Pompidou was widely regarded as being responsible for the peaceful resolution of the student uprising of May 1968. His strategy was to break the coalition of students and workers by negotiating with the trade unions and employers Grinnell Conference. Until this crisis, he was the prime minister of a quiet and prosperous France. However, during the events of May 1968, disagreements arose between Pompidou and de Gaulle. Pompidou did not understand why the president did not inform him of his departure to Baden-Baden on May 29. Their relationship, until then very good, would be strained from then on. Pompidou led and won the 1968 legislative campaign, overseeing a tremendous victory of the Gaullist party. He then resigned. Nevertheless, in part due to his actions during the May 1968 crisis, he appeared as the natural successor to de Gaulle. Pompidou announced his candidature for the presidency in January 1969. Some weeks later, his wife's name was mentioned in the Markovich scandal, thus appearing to confirm her husband's status as a cuckold. Pompidou was certain that de Gaulle's inner circle was responsible for this smear. In social policy, Pompidou's tenure as prime minister witnessed the establishment of the National Employment Fund in 1963 to counter the negative effects on employment caused by industrial restructuring. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> President After the failure of the 1969 constitutional referendum, de Gaulle resigned and Pompidou was elected President of France. 
In the general election of 15 June 1969, he defeated the centrist president of the Senate and acting president Alain Poher by a wide margin 57% to 42%. Though a Gaullist, Pompidou was more pragmatic than de Gaulle, notably facilitating the accession of the United Kingdom to the European Community on 1 January 1973. He embarked on an industrialization plan and initiated the Arianespace project, as well as the TGV project, and furthered the French civilian nuclear program. He was skeptical about the «New Society» program of his Prime Minister, Jacques Chabon Delmas. In 1972, he replaced Chabon Delmas with Pierre Mesmer, a more conservative Gaullist. While the left-wing opposition organized itself and proposed a common program before the 1973 legislative election, Pompidou widened his presidential majority by including centrist pro-European parties. In addition, he paid special attention to regional and local needs in order to strengthen his political party, the UDR Union des Démocraties pour la Vie République, which he made it a central and lasting force in the Gaullist movement. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign affairs The United States was eager to restore positive relations with France after de Gaulle's departure from office. New U.S. President Richard Nixon and his top advisor Henry Kissinger admired Pompidou. The politicians were in agreement on most major policy issues. The United States offered to help the French nuclear program. Economic difficulties, however, arose following the Nixon shock and the 1973-75 recession, particularly over the role of the American dollar as the medium for world trade. Pompidou sought to maintain good relations with the newly independent former French colonies in Africa. In 1971, he visited Mauritania, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cameroons, and Gabon. He brought a message of cooperation and financial assistance, but without the traditional paternalism. More broadly, he made an effort to foster closer relations with North African and Middle Eastern countries in order to develop a hinterland including all nations bordering the Mediterranean. Modernizing Paris. Pompidou's time in office was marked by constant efforts to modernize France's capital city. He spearheaded construction of a modern art museum, the Centre Beaubourg, renamed Centre Pompidou after his death, on the edge of the Marais area of Paris. Other attempts at modernization included tearing down the open air markets at Les Halles and replacing them with the shopping mall of the same name, building the Montparnasse Tower, and constructing an expressway on the right bank of the Seine. Death in office While still in office, Pompidou died on 2 April 1974, 9 p.m., from Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. The funeral service was held at Notre Dame de Paris. Funeral guests were U.S. President Richard Nixon, British Prime Minister Edward Heath and West German Chancellor Willy Brandt, King Hassan II of Morocco, Tunisian President Habib Bourguiba and Rainier III, Prince of Monaco, Pompidou's wife Claude Pompidou would outlive him by more than 30 years. The couple had one adopted son, Alain Pompidou, former President of the European Patent Office. France withdrew from the Eurovision Song Contest 1974, which took place just four days after Pompidou's death, as a mark of respect. Works Anthologie de la Poésie Française, Livre de Poche, Hachette, 1961 La Noed Gordian, Aide. Plan, 1974 Entretions et discours, der volume, aid. Plan, 1975. Pour retablir une vérité, aid. Flammarion, 1982. Ministries See also Centre Georges Pompidou Lycée Francais International Georges Pompidou, a French school in Dubai and Sharjah, United Arab Emirates <laughs>